Hello everybody, welcome to Ageless Rock, a channel for megalithic fans to see megalithic sites from a different perspective. In this video, I would like to share with you an amazing site, but it is relatively unknown. It is called Srasrang. It looks like a simple construction, but actually we know so little, it is as good as we know nothing. I have presented the impossible West and East Barre, the healing power of Jaya Tataka Barre, the colossal motor temple of Angkor Thom and Angkor Wat, and Priyakan Temple with legendary sacred sword called Priyakan Ridge. Today, we are going to explore Srasrang Monument, which is called Barre, Reservoir, Water Tank, or King's Pool. Until today, Strasrang is a construction without a known purpose. It is too small to be called a reservoir. It is too big to be called a water tank. It is a beret too small to be compared to West Beret, East Beret, or Jayatataka Beret. It has steps on the sides to step into the water and therefore it feels like a swimming pool. From Google Map, I can see the length is approximately 790 meters and the width is approximately 390 meters. It is different from other sources you find from the internet. I can safely assume about 308,100 square meters of land is needed for this water containment project. The 2.3 kilometers perimeter is a good morning walk exercise. Over the centuries, there is a large deposit of sediment at the bottom of this structure which I prefer to call Barre because it is a water containment that no one knows what it is for. This photo is just to show you that the depth I'm assuming is approximately 4 meters deep, just like Angkor Wat and West Barre. Although this is a small Barre by comparison to the other three big ones, Removing the volume of about 1.23 million cubic meters is not a small project today, let alone 1,000 years ago. This historical monument could not have escaped written or verbal knowledge to the point of complete ignorance. This beret is big enough to make you think that you are on a stormy sea during monsoon rain season. Cambodia has six months of rainy days where at the height of the season, torrential rains can be fatal. In my opinion, the last thing you need is a water tank near Tonle Sap Lake at the peak of a rainy season. I guarantee you, no king will be here for a few months. Archaeologists say this pond was initiated by a Buddhist minister by the name Kavindra Rimatana during the reign of Rajendra Varman II, around 900 AD, and was modified by Jaya Varman VII, around 1200 AD. Rajendra Varman II was a Hindu, and Jaya Varman VII was a Buddhist. In my opinion, this monument is unclear as to which religion should belong to. Most written articles say Strasrang is translated as Royal Path. I am not sure how that is the case because a simple Google translation shows it only means staggered pond. As you can see from the photo, there are steps going into the beret. The locals probably think of this as a pond and since this is a colossal pond, it must be for the king. Since it is so awesome, it must be for the king to take a bath. Therefore, it is also called a royal bath. By now, you know this superstructure can be a beret, reservoir, water tank, king's pool, or royal bath. It is whatever you think it is. I can call this sunset pool because it is famous for sunset view. The beret is not always full of water. During drought season, it will dry up to the point where you can see there is a structure in the middle of the beret. From the photo, I highly doubt that ancient Cambodians actually chipped away huge blocks of stones from an unknown bedrock 
and then drag it all the way here. But later, they didn't know what to do when they found it in ruin. So, the Cambodians waited for someone to tell them what to do. Then, the French archaeologists came along and told them what happened here and what to do next. In the meantime, the low water level is a great opportunity to clean up the beret. In 2019, the water was drained completely to allow excavation. Research was conducted on how to restore the structure back to its original state. During excavation, they found two tridents. Typically, this would be an object identified as Trishula which belongs to Lord Shiva and this temple would have been linked to Hinduism. There are also tens of thousands of small quartz crystals found here. This is very strange to me and might hold the key to understanding this site, but no one is talking about crystals found here. There are two turtles found here as well. Turtles are related to Chinese culture that represents longevity and prosperity. There is also a Naga which typically links to Hinduism. So the relationship to this site as Buddhist temple is actually still debatable. It was only in 2020 that reconstruction began. The structure has a square base measuring 8 meters on all sides. The lotus-looking structure called temple that stands out is 3.4 meters tall. This is an odd structure that even mainstream archaeologists agree they have no idea why it is like this. The stone monument looks like a lotus and so it should be a Buddhist temple. But actually, Buddhists would and should prefer a standing Buddha statue than a linga-looking tip. For now, it is an open debate as to why in the middle of a beret is a lotus-looking structure with a linga-looking top. The reconstruction is solely based on documentations available. It is believed that Jayavarman VII created this temple this way because he liked to enjoy music here. It sounds to me there is something to do with sound, and sound is vibration. So this temple is possibly emitting certain sound frequency for reasons we will never know. So what does ancient knowledge say about this monument? According to a 10th century inscription that says, Water has been stored for the benefits of all creatures. Seems to tell me that this monument was not meant for worship. The lost knowledge was lost together with the lost civilization. This structure with a huge body of water has to do with health for living organisms. Plants, insects, animals and humans are the beneficiaries of this unknown force called Qi. Just like Jayatataka Bare, it has capabilities to emit energies that heals and therefore ancient knowledge says it was a hospital. Today, when the beret is full, it will look like a lake with a tiny pyramidal island. It looks like a lighthouse if you zoom in to the beret. But I would like to draw a similarity of this superstructure with those in Indonesia. The concept of this architecture is a sunken square structure in the middle with a tip. I made a video on Sambisari Temple in Indonesia which you can find in my channel under Indonesia playlist. It is a square temple approximately 6.5 meters below ground level. I also have a video on Kedolan Temple in Indonesia. It is another temple which is below ground level. This one is 8 meters below surface. Although Gobekli Tepe temple doesn't fit into this concept entirely, it is nevertheless interesting to note that it was buried 6 meters below ground level. This temple has a famous platform on the east known as a landing stage. It has two lions overlooking the beret. Old photos will show there is nothing in the middle. 
Newer photos will show the Nagas facing the temple in the middle of the beret. I am very sure this whole thing cannot be just a place for worshipping. No kings will make this for the sake of music. By the way, what kind of music will it be? Cambodian song or Indian song? As I mentioned in my previous video, a temple on an island surrounded by a massive body of water is the key concept of the architectural design. If you are flying at 20 km altitude, you will see this satellite view. I have covered 6 water bodies which to me are of the same concept in my previous videos. These 7 projects to contain water stretches 21 km from west to east. Jayatataka, East and West Berets are clearly large water bodies while Angkor Wat and Angkor Thom and Priyakan Temple have water bodies called moods. Comparing all these, Srasrang is one of the smallest in this group. No matter how religious the entire country was, this construction cannot be humanly possible. And if they do, no culture will disappear without a trace in less than 200 years because Zhou Ta Kuan from China was here in 13th century for 11 months and was already clueless as to how it was created. Well, that's all for Srasrang Beret presentation. I hope you can visit this site and explore on your own with megalithic lens. This is Bernie Ong signing out. Lei Hai.